Hello, everyone, and welcome to the season finale, episode eight of Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast brought to you by HBO Max and DC. Guys, this is the last episode, the season finale, and it's going to be a real barn burner. We've got action. We've got fatherly hallucinations and also broken legs. So we've got no time to waste. Yeah. And as promised, James Gunn is back for the final episode to close out strong so we can finally ask him what this whole season was all about. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You're not going to want to miss this. Yeah. So uh, for the last time, let's let's get get into into it. it. Why is there a bald eagle in your car? It's eagle. Eagly is your pet eagle. Yeah. Is your dog named Doggy? (laughs) All right. Do you have a daughter named Daughtery? (laughs) How's it going? I'm Ify Wadiway. And I'm your other host, Fiona Nova. And this is Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast from HBO Max and DC. And this one is it. It is the season finale. There's so much to talk about. So much went down. But before we jump into it, I have to always remind you that this is a companion podcast for episode eight and most importantly, the, the, the finale. Mm-hmm. So if you have not watched yet, pause Go watch it and come back because there are a lot of spoilers. And if you haven't even started yet, go all the way back because we don't want to spoil anything for you. It all comes down to this. So let's talk about it. We've got so many things that happen. Uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, first off, you have Adebayo trying to make things right. You yeah. know, her whole spot was kind of blown up. She kind of feels bad about. For sure. She, I don't even think she kind of feels bad. She feels bad. Yeah. And I think she's been feeling bad since like episode one. <laughs> I don't think she's gotten better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now she's really feeling the consequences of losing the trust of Peacemaker and really manipulating him. Something that, you know, she even mentioned back when she manipulated manipulated uh, vigilante to go into the prison yeah. she doesn't like doing that but yeah. while she's trying to apologize she's starting to she's <laughs> yeah yeah there it is <laughs> yeah that's what happens and it's very annoying i know i'm the last person that you want to hear from right now chris and i can't i can't apologize enough for <laughs> I really am sorry. I'm just trying to. (laughs) What are you going to (laughs) say? This is a bit and he will run with it. (laughs) And he will not stop. Yeah. Yeah. So Adebayo is feeling the guilt. Peacemaker is making her feel bad and he's gonna run with it. Oh, he's yeah. gonna keep running with it. Adebayo calls her mom. Yeah. So and her mom and she says calls like call like the Justice League or something. Yeah. And the message is relayed, but we that's kind of all we hear, and we're like, okay. Okay, so back to the story. Yes. We got like a helmet line. It's kind of like that Chekhov's gun I was mentioning a few episodes ago, where you have all these different helmets. We know they do different things. So of course for the finale, they're gonna whip them all out mm-hmm. so we can see see what most of it does yeah and uh yeah well we are about they are about to use the sonic boom helmet for Mm -hmm. this sonic boom barn plan let's not forget the (laughs) anti-gravity right the anti-gravity that they lost (laughs) there's no we will not be finding that that sensitive throughout the episodes we never really understood how this power works how does it activate with um, Peacemaker's voice? Does it activate with just like White Dragon's voice? There's no activation, but now we can see that I guess anyone can activate the helmets. Yeah. And then we have another important moment. Mm-hmm. We've wondered if Eagly is can actually understand and the whole mission starts to ride on Eagly carrying the Sonic Boom helmet close enough, dropping it on top of the barn yeah. so they can use it. That's right. I need you to take that helmet and drop it on top of that barn. No. Eagly. No. Take Eagly. the helmet. Take the helmet. Eagly, take the helmet. Eagly, take the helmet. Good, Eagly, good. Good boy. <laughs> go, Eagly. Go to the barn. Go to the barn. 
And um, uh, well, blows it. Yeah, yep, didn't didn't, didn't work. Do that. Didn't so confirmed, Eagly has no idea what anyone's saying. To yeah, him. he's kind of just like a dog. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? He senses <laughs> feelings more so yeah. than language. So now they got to find the helmet right. because their whole plan kind of hinges on this and it can never go smoothly. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's what makes a good plan. But that's mm. when we see uh, something harrowing. You know, his yeah, dad yeah, yeah. is back. His dad is kind of haunting him mm-hmm. in his in his head. And it seems like even though he's killed his father on the physical plane, he still has his father inside. Yeah. Message. And obviously, like, it isn't him, but it is real to Peacemaker. So, yeah. yeah. But he did, he did the right thing and he, like killed him in his head yeah you know and i hope hopefully he just keeps on doing that but yeah so that happens they find the helmet right where the needle was shot Mm -hmm. and the plan's back on they're good to go but now the new plan is economos going undercover to uh to be uh, to be like a security guard yeah to drop the bag yeah with the helmet in it but underground but we get like a deep moment here Mm -hmm. on his like on his way back up when he stopped and they ask him about the dyed beard, Mm -hmm. we find out a lot about Economos. We find out that he's never had a girlfriend and that he thought that the dyeing his beard would make him more approachable and have friends. And then it gets even more heart-wrenching when you see Peacemaker hearing this. I know. And for the first time ever, it seems like he's learning, period. (laughs) He's learning, period, and also that he's, like, understanding people's feelings. Like, he can hurt other people's feelings and he needs to be more empathetic. It, It almost feels like it happens because he himself had to go through that yeah. with uh, Adebayo, you know, mm-hmm. like he's he's like feeling the pain of betrayal with that. And now he's kind of realizing that actions and things you do have consequences beyond like what you surface level perceive, you know. Can we go back to that moment when he did drop the bag? He actually just dropped the bag. Yeah. No more conjures. No oh, yes, and because he, he noped. Saw, he saw the cow. He, saw he the cow. noped so fast. He was like, I'm good. Like, this is where, that's it. Dude, that's this cool. where my journey ends. Yeah, I don't want to get close to this. Yeah. yeah. So then there's this uh, after there is this massacre of butterflies because they keep using the sonic boom. Oh, but yeah. another thing we learn about the helmet. There's charges, it seems. Yeah. It needs to recharge. Oh, yeah. And so so they're just going toe-to-toe. Mm-hmm. Big fight. You know, you got Harcourt and Vigilante mm-hmm. fighting. Uh, I mean, they're fighting. They're really doing their damnness. They're fighting. Mm-hmm. But then they get There taken. are so many butterflies. There's so many. There's so many. There's so many. And they can't. Obviously, they fight as much as they can. And the fight scene was really cool. It's like mm-hmm. a little slow motion. Mm-hmm. Like, you see the, the moves that everyone's making. Oof, they it both, was a they, fight. Yeah. yeah. It was a fight. And Adebayo comes into the rescue. Yeah, shooting. yeah. Just right. <laughs> and, that's, and that was, I mean, like, it was real cool to see Adebayo get, like, a full action piece like yeah, absolutely. that. Absolutely. Because she went from the the person who was just like really meek and afraid to do any of this. And she's coming out double, double, you know, dual, double wielding, yeah, dual wielding, busting it out. You know, because at the end of the day, if she is Amanda Waller's daughter, mm-hmm. there has to be some kind of fight. In yeah. There. Amanda it doesn't Waller matter. Have, yeah. Amanda Waller yes. would not have sent her if she didn't exactly. think she was capable. Exactly. Yeah. And then, yes. then it comes down to the moment they reunite. Mm-hmm. They find John Cena. Uh, Adebayo tries to torpedo fails. Fails. And the head. Uh, they capture Peacemaker. They go inside. It's, it's, it's Sophie. So Sophie essentially is like grabs Peacemaker, has him by the neck essentially, and is saying like, hey, I we don't need to fight. Let yeah. me explain to you what we're doing here. And now we get the deep dive into what the butterflies are, what their mission was. Yeah. So we find out that the mission wasn't necessarily an invasion. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an invasion, but not the kind that it was perceived as like a takeover. Right. They just wanted to take over leaders Mm -hmm. specifically because they saw the human race moving in the same way that their race moved that destroyed their own planet. Mm -hmm. So they were just going to be our gentle overlords to help us not help guide us. Yeah. To to not have their fate. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting 
because like you know they said you know we want world peace just like you Mm -hmm. this whole season that's all peacemaker said he said he will get peace no matter how many women children or men he has to kill to get it and they have the same ethos but it's not enough it's not enough it's not enough for peacemaker he's like no he goes ahead and says torpedo activate torpedo and (laughs) autobio flies into the cow he he dispatches sophie which now goth is released Mm -hmm. which was interesting yeah because at this point we know peacemaker knows Mm -hmm. that goth was going to be free yeah but he's not worried about that yeah yeah, yeah. he goes to help out of bio Mm -hmm. and he kind of doesn't have to worry because their food source is dead yeah they will no longer they will eventually kind of just wipe out wipe out yeah peacemaker seems like he seems confident that his like decision and not really caring yeah i think he's i think we're good and so he carries adebayo out and then we get this scene yeah i mean the justice league oh my god yeah Yeah, you can't miss you can't can't miss miss. that we get this scene that really is a spoiler yeah it's it's a major scene you know the justice league interacting with peacemaker in this universe it's a cohesive universe and you get peacemaker to finally have his moment to tell the justice league uh to fuck your, off yeah <laughs> you're too late you're too late i you already did I it i already did it you're yeah. too late and i think he definitely felt good about himself doing oh yeah because you can always see that i feel like i i bet peacemaker really wished he was part of that mm-hmm. crew i feel like he oh, wished he was, he was at that pedestal or yeah. at that level that's all he wants but i think he felt really good being like hey i fixed this yeah you could do better he really is because remember how excited he got when someone recognized mm-hmm. him and then definitely was like yeah you're 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 a whack job yeah you know so yeah he he really kind of felt some type of way about them and so him mm-hmm. getting to be like you know go out of here and tell aquaman yeah. go fuck some fish <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah and then we all end up in the hospital because everyone is essentially broken and yeah. or dying yeah oh yeah so uh and and i think this is very it's very sentimental because vigilante as 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 uh, much of an idiot he could be he really he he's like beat up yeah the guy's beat and up and he was still standing yeah, and he was trying, he was so, trying hard. so hard but he eventually just couldn't handle it passed out passed out we've got harcourt who's really injured like i mean she was shot essentially she's really injured will she even make it i mean she does but like barely Mm -hmm. um everyone's hurt we've got five days took her five five days and guess who was waiting for her for those five days peacemaker Peacemaker. Peacemaker. the guy was waiting for her wanted to know if she was okay and i think harcourt at that moment realized like hey this guy really does care for me and um and i think is going to open up a little more yeah Uh, but we also just do we do see like this road to recovery yeah Uh, especially because it's it's recovery in a big way Mm -hmm. because Adebayo goes forward on the press conference and blows up Project X yes talks about what it is and we get another Viola Davis cameo Mm -hmm. (laughs) we always we love we love those cameos Yeah, yeah, yeah but I I think like at least when I was watching it I was like Oh gosh, this is big because not only is it affecting, let's say, the Peacemaker show, yeah. it's affecting Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's so who knows what mm-hmm. the repercussions of that mm-hmm. motion is going to Absolutely. lead to. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. major. It's major. So we've got essentially without trying, I, I mean, we can always try to figure out like what might season two be or yeah. what would, the, you know, but it seems like there's a lot of ways this can go oh 100 because it has that somber final scene where you see peacemaker sitting next to the spirit of his dad Mm -hmm. and goff drinking the last up and you can even in the pour there wasn't that much of the nectar left and it's and he's just staring off and eagerly kind of drops by and it's kind of like well what's next Mm -hmm. and we could sit here and try and ponder what's next or we can pester the writer and director of the show, James <laughs> yeah, Gunn, exactly. and shake that information out. Absolutely. Adam. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, yeah, head to this interview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are joined again today by with the beautiful, amazing yeah. James Gunn, the, the creator and just amazing artiste. <laughs> Of the century. Um, of the century. Of I, the I century. feel like that's how you know it. it was a good season. It's a it's good a season. Because <laughs> if she was like, we're back again with James. I'm like, oh, this no, is I added on to the compliments. You have to keep going. <laughs> well, listen, we've got some 
of a bunch of questions for you since it is episode eight. Great. It is yeah. the final episode and we can talk about whatever yeah. and anything. Oh, yeah. So uh, we, I want to know, like, one of the fun things about this show is that Peacemaker and the gang go from, like, Keystone cops while, pl- uh, like, while planning their attacks to badass action heroes in the moment. Is Is comedy the most fun to write for you or, like or direct i i like writing comedy i hate directing and editing comedy it's Mm. it's the hardest of all of them i love action is the most fun for me overall because it's just it's very much like putting a puzzle together and um it's it's a much more of a right brain activity in certain ways you're not relying relying on the muse for it comedy is harder i always have a very specific thing in my brain of how the actors are supposed to say something how they're supposed to do it and it's just like trying to make force things and oftentimes through editing jerry rigging and putting you know elmer's glue and popsicles together to create what i what i think is funny peacemaker the comedy was probably came easier and was more fun than anything i've done simply because i have a very intimate relationship with three of the leads uh with with uh with john cena with with uh amelia Hart, with uh you know jennifer holland and uh steve agee who's been one of my best friends for 10 years so it made it that gave me a real center to kind of structure that together and then getting to know Freddie and uh, Danielle and um, Chuck, um, who's gone on to have a big role in Guardians Volume 3 is, you know, it just is a great, great team of people to create stuff that's funny and then the dramatic stuff that that comes along. And I, I think one of the fun things about carving the season out is letting us just push that sad element you know a little bit more the, the the element the dramatic elements the relationship between harcourt and peacemaker the relationship between uh at a bio and peacemaker and see where those things go in a deeper way and in a much deeper way than it could do in a movie because in a movie you're so limited but yeah. in a tv show you know we have uh, eight episodes to craft these really intimate relationships that have a lot of nuances and things to them and that that made it really fun it, it looked like it was funny. You know, I got to speak with Steve and it's so funny uh, because, you know, Steve, I, I know his comedy from when I was in high school because I was in comedy sports high school. league, uh-huh. And then that's when I accidentally oh, yeah. made him feel old because I was like, you were the advisor of my family. He doesn't need to fit. He is old. He doesn't need to feel old. He, is- <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said there was a point when he was on set and he looked around. He's like, I'm the oldest one here. <laughs> Uh, uh, it wasn't exactly true because I was yeah. definitely there. So yeah. So like I we were talking about how like you know with with Stephen Economist like you he had this like deep moment in this episode where he got to be very dramatic yeah. and serious. And yeah. to me, like as a comedy dork myself, like you know it's very easy to be like the goofy guy, the comedy guy, and to finally see like a comedy guy get a moment to like show his range. I yeah, guess. he was, you know it was it was a difficult scene to craft because Steve was so good in that moment. It was how emotional do we go? Because he's trying to hide himself from the butterflies, but he's also being honest about something for the first time. And he's backed into a corner where the only, you know, he's lied about this for eight episodes about having dyed his beard. And even though we can all see that it's clearly dyed, uh, <laughs> about having dyed his beard. And now we, we he's backed into a corner and he knows the only chance he has for survival is to be completely honest. And uh, And we get this incredibly beautiful moment that's as much about him as it is about peacemaker who kind of sees the repercussions of being such a dick like he is a dick like uh he's always been a bully you know and um and him being able to see like the repercussions of this guy who he's come to really cherish and seeing how he's hurt his feelings to give that character who's kind of the comedic sidekick, that deep moment you know is uh it was a lot of a lot of uh very gratifying you know, um, mm-hmm. so and and that this episode was fun in a lot of ways to 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 shoot because of that and mm-hmm. give these characters not a wrap up because they all have a long way to go, but get those little glimpses of things where we see you know Harcourt's moment of tenderness at the end is one of the things that always moves me the most because she's just been somebody who's just pushed people away a hundred percent, yes, no trust of anyone and. The moment when 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 uh, Peacemaker comes into the hospital room and she realizes this guy who she thinks of as a goofball has been waiting outside for her for five days to see if she lives or not. 
I think she experiences a kind of love that she hasn't before. And that's a beautiful moment to, to see. And then, of course, the friendship between Adebayo and Peacemaker, which we see come to fruition here. And we see really the story that's being told the whole season. This is about Peacemaker's ideals, about, you know, peace at any cost, no matter how many women or children. And then he's faced with this choice at the end, definitely making the right choice from a personal perspective where he's admitting that he loves other people and his ideals are less important than those people that he loves. And for him, that's a complete change from who we saw um, in the movie, The Suicide Squad. And it's been the thing that he's been struggling with throughout that all of a sudden he's going, you know, he says it in, I think the, 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 the second episode two, he goes, Maybe I'm just a maniac, you know? Maybe I'm <laughs> yeah. just crazy. Yeah. And I think he's starting to realize that, yeah, there there is a part of what he does that is just, he's just a, a, a maniac. Um, and part of what he does is what Bloodsport accuses him of doing in the beginning of the Suicide Squad is it's, he's using his ideals as a, a, an excuse for his own violent ways. Um and what his father taught, the way that his father taught him to be. Autobio and Peacemaker, they both have these like, overbearing parents with strong ideals so they already have that kindredness that they don't That's know right. where yeah. like like be, to be honest Ed, amanda waller is not too different she's like look as, as long as the job gets done it doesn't matter what it takes and i think she's worth i mean yeah. you know the, amanda waller you know at least in the suicide squad yes. amanda waller is a pretty hardcore individual i i mean i think of amanda waller as the antagonist of yes. the suicide Squad. oh yeah it's not starro it's not the generals and corridor maltese it's amanda waller i think amanda waller's ambition is a big part of what she does his dad's worth his dad's the worst of all like, yeah yeah he's the worst yeah. character i think i've ever written whereas with peacemaker i think he's violent and he's a yeah. brute oh, um yeah. but i don't think he's ambitious i think he's uh like, he believes he's doing the right thing. Even though he may be fooling himself into believing that, he believes that he is. Where it's like, yeah, he his, he has shitty ideals and he sticks to them, but it's because he thinks he's doing what right because he dealt with a traumatic experience and the way that he chose to deal with it uh, was not therapy. It was sticking to these ideals to make sure he doesn't make a mistake like that again. That that Well, I think that's exactly right. I mean, I think that one of the things that, that happens to us, it, you know, when we experience childhood trauma, which all of my movies are, and TV shows are about <laughs> at the end of the day, is that he needs something to control what he feels. He killed his own brother by accident, 100%. But he thinks that somehow, through him making this promise, he can control life around him, which Adebayo says to him at the beginning of this episode, where she says, you know, you can't stop death from being meaningless just because you've made this vow. This episode and the change here is part of his growth as a human being yeah. and that everybody isn't who we thought they were from the beginning of, of the show. And, uh, and it makes it hopefully uh, fun for discussion because of that. Yeah. And so without giving anything away, what's, what's next for Peacemaker and the gang? Well, I, I think there's, there's changes afoot. I mean, listen, I think that the, the sort of the bitter moment at the very end of the episode is is very, very telling, which is he's killed his father, um, but his father's still there. The voice of his father that he carries around with him. And so how is Peacemaker going to deal with that? You know, how is Adebayo going to deal with the repercussions of what she did at the end of the show with uh, Amanda Waller? I mean, she betrayed her own mother and her mother is, you know, you know, she'll do anything to to save herself, yeah. really, you know. And so, what's going to happen there? What's going to happen with, you know, you know, Economos is back with Waller, obviously, at the end of the show. There's a sadness there. Um, Vigilante is the one character who remains unchanged from start to finish. He's the same moron he always was. And what's going to happen between Harcourt and Pe Peacemaker? Uh, Peacemaker, I mean, is that more than friendship? And is it even friendship? You know. Um, so I think that we have all these different characters and we need to see where they're all going. And, and hopefully we can uh, 
make that an interesting experience for people to continue to see these characters, uh, whether it's in Peacemaker uh, season two or other other shows. I have a, a suspicion that you can do it and, and very well, yeah. be, as you've proven in season one. And mm-hmm. I can talk about this forever. I could, I mean, I could go for two, three hours, but. They're waving me down. They're saying it's time to bring this in for a landing. Ooh, so you're okay. HBO Max overlords or <laughs> some cruel, cruel masters. <laughs> we didn't even talk about the ju- didn't even talk about the Justice League, you guys. <laughs> you're right. We didn't oh say anything. God. We didn't even, <laughs> didn't even mention it. We didn't even mention it. We didn't even mention okay, it. So we didn't mention we got, it. Yeah, we got to talk about that. Should we talk about yeah. it? <laughs> we have to. I feel like that. Must have been the hardest ask of the season. Were, were they like, sure? Were they like, it was, it was a, it was a real struggle. <laughs> and now I made the Justice League show up, and they're all together, and they get to, uh, they're they're there to save the day, obviously. But Peacemaker gets his little moment of, yeah. of being the yeah. boss because he obviously has a, he has a deep, deep, deep jealousy <laughs> of legitimate superheroes because he is. After all, a guy who lives in a trailer park with an eagle and uh, and a weapon that's compensating for something <laughs> awful. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit too big. Yeah. All of these things that Peacemaker says about these guys, I want you to know. Uh, they, you know, Aquaman doesn't really fuck fish. Um, uh, you know, Superman doesn't like to get shit on. Uh, you know, Green Arrow doesn't have a, a big butthole in his brony costume. He just has a brony costume. You know, uh, Wonder Woman never IF'd Peacemaker from across the room. She was probably looking at him because he had a stupid helmet on. You know, so all these things are are... In 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 uh, in in Peacemaker's brain, we should make that clear for everyone yeah. that none of that is canon. Uh, uh, yeah. um, however, I, bat bat might is bat might is canon. <laughs> bat, might, bat might is bat might is canon. I just hear the sounds of the keyboards right now updating the wikis. They're like they're like, oh no, <laughs> we made a mistake. We have to erase <laughs> all of this. I'm gonna get a lot of questions. Which but was it Batfleck or Battinson? Which one faced Batmite? I'm not. How did this work? I don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I just made it up. Somebody else's problem to deal with. It. I'm the one who put Batmite into the world. Now it's their problem. All right. Now to wrap this guest interview up, we've got some eagly mail, and it's the final of this season. So we're going to take a fan-submitted question and ask, Yep. What made Peacemaker a better candidate for his own show opposed to the other Suicide Squad members? That is, this is a question he gets asked on Twitter a lot. I yeah, do. I bet. I, bet. I, I think we kind of talked about it yeah. a little bit in the first episode. I mean, I think there was just more there to, to, to you know, to, to digest with Peacemaker. I had a lot more. I like seeing, you know, assholes find something redeeming in their personalities, you know? So I, I like that, you know, I like that with whether it's, you know, blood sport or rocket raccoon or peacemaker. I like finding the something that that's something really beautiful in the ugliness of this planet. And I think that by finding, you know, the best in the worst people, I think maybe that helps to be sort of a, a guide for myself in my own life of doing that with the people around me, you know, but also listen, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I just felt inspired to do a peacemaker TV show. You know, I just, it, I just wanted to do it. And so DC came to me and they said, y- if you can make a TV show about anybody from the suicide squad, who would it be? And it was like peacemaker. I had already mm-hmm. thought about it. So it was, it was just came naturally. And, COVID was happening at the time. I had mm-hmm. nothing to do. I was trapped at my house. And so I wrote all eight episodes in two months. What? Yes. Nothing ever changed. That's amazing. That's I, what happened. You know, that was just a year and a half ago or less mm-hmm. yeah. uh, that I started writing the show. And now it's out in the world. It's it's an amazing, amazing occurrence for me to be able to create something and then make it so quickly and then have it out in the world so quickly. You know, mm-hmm. uh, know. You know I'm finishing Guardians 3, which started four years ago. So it's uh, it's been really it's been a great journey with a great group of people on, you know, on both on the HBO Max side, 
on the DC side and you guys, which I appreciate you guys doing this podcast for these eight episodes. I really do. And, uh, and can't wait to, to see you guys again on, on, on season two. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's, <laughs> Thank let's you do for it. saying that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I do appreciate you guys doing this. Thanks so much for this. Oh, and of course. Thank you. No. you are just... such a pleasure to talk to. Yeah, it's yeah. great knowing more about Peacemaker and everything. So thank you for taking the time out of your day. Yeah, Seriously. Yeah, yeah. Talk to you yeah. again. Bye. That was our interview with James Gunn. That was a blast. I could have kept talking. He is my favorite person right now. He's like, I could talk to him for hours. Yes. What a great guy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if the interview ends, you know what begins. It's time for the Peace Prize. So part of me is a bit sad because it's the last one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But... We're we gotta, going out with a bang. And we got to give it to it. So I think the award uh, for the Peace Prize this week is going to be the Death to Peace Award, mm. which is going to be the attack on the barn. I think that entire fight sequence with them, finally a team Ooh. together fighting. And then there's the intro music. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It was like yeah. the fight with the intro music. It was from like rim, like going back in a circle. Mm-hmm. We're back here and we're, we're all fighting for one thing. Yeah. And even though they did take some L's, mm-hmm. even though people were hurt, yeah, and they were, and they were shot at. Yeah, they still re- they succeeded, and yeah, yeah, they were they, able to get to become like be a team. Yeah, they finally were a team in that moment, and even had a theme song. Yeah. So I think that's a well, well awarded prize. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I'm gonna mix it up. What? Because I want to give out one more peace prize. Let's see what is. I want to give an eagerly hug out to the community for supporting us oh. these past few weeks throughout all the episodes. I'm going to give that eagerly hug from us to you. I've been on Twitter, I've been on Facebook seeing all your favorite moments, y'all communicating with us and I really appreciate it. You know, yeah. it's been fun doing this. Hey, this was great. I love hanging with this guy. Yeah. This uh, this entire this entire uh Podly podcast was great and yeah. it was great doing it with you. So well, it was so fun doing it with you. Hey, what's up? It's Solo Iffy popping in here yet again with a little bonus surprise before we get out of here and close out this season of Podly. Look, we have none other than the comic artist, writer, publisher, and chief creative officer of DC, Jim Lee, and he has a little message. For all of y'all. Thank you so much for watching Peacemaker. Taking a character from the page to the screen can be a challenge, but James Gunn, John Cena, and the entire creative team knocked it out of the park. Having an episodic show gave us the opportunity to introduce new fans to a beloved character and expand the lore by creating a fun and heartfelt arc that balanced the gruesome with the comedy. TV and comics are unique in that they allow the evolution and reinvention of characters to tell great, complex and satisfying stories over the course of multiple episodes or issues. This show was a wonderful chance to see Peacemaker grow in a very funny and sometimes disgusting way with an equally cool cast of characters by his side. This show is about superheroes, but it tells very human stories about family and where we come from, like in Christopher Smith and Leota Adebayo's case, and also who we want to be and where we want to go. So thank you again and see you soon. Thank you so much, Jim, and all our guests who's joined us this season for Podly. Let's get back to wrapping things up. Oh, man. Well, I mean, that was it, guys. This was the season finale of Podly and also of Peacemaker. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been Podly, the official Peacemaker companion podcast from HBO Max in D.C. And uh, look... It doesn't have to stop here. Your DC journey does not have to stop here. All you have to do is go to DC Universe Infinite, sign up, and you can be ahead of the curve by getting caught up on all DC comics mm-hmm. and reading along your favorite stuff. You know, there's uh, a, a certain caped crusader who's got a movie coming out soon, so you might want to be catching up on Ooh, that. Cool. Mm. And yeah. hey, if you want some merchandise and some Peacemaker merchandise, nonetheless, check out shop.dccomics.com for the latest drops. You're not going to want to miss them. Yeah. So until the next time you see us, wherever you see us, keep the peace. Ooh, keep the peace. Ooh.